Now that we've gone over how spontaneous polarization can exist in a material, so for example it exists in the tragonal form of barium titanate, but not in the cubic form. So now we're going to look at what happens when we apply an electric field uh, to a piezoelectric material. So namely we're going to try barium titanate out. So let's draw a rectangle, which is going to be extremely exaggerated. Uh, we'll draw that middle line. We'll draw the titanium above. We'll draw the three oxygens below, which is going to be on one on the other side. And so there's basically, if you look at the box, there's going to be four oxygens around the perimeter. One, two, and then three, four are on the perimeter. And there's going to be one titanium atom right in the center, which is going to be displaced in the case of a, uh, a tetragonal uh, barium titanate. So here, again, we have the plus, we have the minus. Um, the polarization goes from minus to plus. And you have this polarization. So if we, let's say, electrode this. And obviously when we have a real material, we're going to have like all these stacked together and we apply some voltage, what happens? Let's say we apply a positive voltage and a negative voltage. So this positive obviously is going to go down and this negative is going to go up. Therefore, the material is going to shrink. So we'll change in voltage, positive, and we'll shrink it. And you see this happening because these, uh, this polarization vector strongly reacts. Uh, with the piezo uh, component. So we have therefore this, this this atom goes down and these ones go up. Now let's take a look at that other case. You know that um, that simple one dimensional atom, you know the easiest way to draw a, uh, a nonpolar material is to draw this one dimensional string of materials. Okay, And they're the same obviously the same distance apart and uh, they have polarization vectors going uh, like this and so on and it continues and it continues so we're writing we're writing verse so basically what happens here is if you apply an electric field let's say let's say this actual material we apply an electric field positive voltage here and negative voltage here therefore the electric field goes this way so what happens when the electric field goes this way is that the negative atoms he wants to go that way. The negative atoms want to go this way, and the positive atoms want to go that way. So basically, the motion is canceled. And this is why you won't see motion when you uh, add a uh, when you induce an electric field from applying a voltage, but you will see that in a piezoelectric material. Because although uh, perhaps the outward, you know, these, uh, you know, the the atoms on the outside, which are let's say canceling them, ch canceling each other out, uh, they may they may not see net polarization, but see because this uh, breaking of symmetry here. <coughs> we have these atoms actually displacing downward and they're coming together uh, and we also have them moving this can be a little bit better explained uh, using a spring model so for a non-piezo so a non-polar material we're gonna have this plus and we're gonna have a spring, you know, because uh, you know, bonding between materials are like springs. So I'm just drawing this for example. And if you apply an electric field, which is is positive and negative, uh, the positive atoms are going that way, and the negative atoms are going this way. So this is getting compression, and this is getting tension. So this is tension and compression. So this goes under, under undergoes compression. This undergoes tension. So the basic uh, the net displacement. If we're measuring the displacement here, 
if we, if we apply this one goes that way and this atoms goes this way and then therefore we don't get any net, no net displacement but let's look at the polar piezo electric material and uh, this material again it has a positive but what do you notice about my drawing <laughs> there's different bondings between each atom there's a different bond strength see as you may imagine um, the bond strength because this titanium atom displaced it's going to be different between this start this portion and it's going to be different between this portion okay we can expect because these this atom became close to this oxygen the bonding here is going to be strong or it's going to be repelling and we can tell because this atom is getting close to here this this atom is this uh, titanium is far from this one it's going to be a weaker bond so because this uh, is the case and we have the still more dynamic displacement and therefore we'll have different um, springs so when we have different springs uh, let's say the big one is stiff and the other one is is weak so I need to check I'm not exactly sure which one's stiff and which one's weak uh, I think we'll probably figure that out together actually in a few few moments uh, so which one's stiff and which one's weak but basically what happens when you apply an electric field across of here, across here let's say the electric field is going that way this atom this spring the, he wants to go this way again and he wants to go that way let's draw that in a different color uh, so he this this uh, positive uh, nucleus wants to go that way and this positive uh, negative atom wants to go this way and therefore but this doesn't go under much tension or compression because this is such a stiff spring pretty much the delta L is zero here but this is a really weak spring so this atom wants to go that way and this positive one wants to go this way so this actually moves quite a bit it's easy then because this cancellation doesn't occur this material will now bend this way will now become smaller uh, and it will, it will dis the net we will have a positive net dis we will have a net displacement so this will be true for this material because these different springs And next, I want to briefly describe uh, what we call um, electrostriction. So, piezo electricity, piezo versus electrostriction. This sounds like really similar. Electro, okay, apply electric field and get a strain. And piezo electricity, apply force. Well, they don't work exactly in in uh, the same way but we're going to show you what's the difference at an atomic level at the basic function of the material they are related thermodynamically but we'll, we're not going over that right now but we're just going to draw these little pictures of 1D materials and we can understand quite a bit from them so first of all We'll notice that in uh, in the piezo we have a strong spring and we have a, we have a strong spring and we have a weak spring, and in the electrostriction we have the same spring. So I, I mentioned that when you apply an electric field, uh, depending on the depending on the sign, you will get a net displacement because this will not pretty much not displace zero, and this will displace. Check. 
so then thus we get a net displacement. But if we look over here, if we apply an electric field, you know, these are the same spring. And as we mentioned earlier, if you, if you had the same spring, there will be no net displacement. But hold on one second, we said this electrostriction. There has to be some displacement. So how can we have the same spring and have net displacement? And to answer this question, we're going to have we actually have to know we have to know the quality of, of springs. Not the quality of springs, but the quality of bonds. That pulling on a bond, pulling a bond, it's easier. It's easy. Compressing a bond, it's hard. This is because when you're pulling on it, you're working where you're working like against electrostatic forces. But when you're pushing on it, eventually when the when the atoms get closer and closer together, there's quantum mechanical. There's some quantum stuff going on there, and thus it becomes really hard to compress. Therefore, the uh, therefore the, since it's because it's easier to expand than compress, and I mentioned if you apply an electric field over here, and let's say electric field going that way, we're gonna have this atom going that way and this atom going this way. So this is compressing, right? And I said compressing is hard, so I'm gonna say the delta L is zero, and this delta L is gonna be positive because this one is uh, expanding this way. So the, well, the delta L is positive because this this one is expanding. It's easy to expand it, but let's take the other case, uh, and this is the electric field. Let's take the case where the electric field is not that way. So we have an electric field going this way. In that case, we will have different. We will have the uh, we have this atom going this way and this atom going that way and this time I'm going this way. So now here we have compression and thus we have delta L because it's really hard to compress the spring. But we have extension here again. So delta L is positive. Thus an electrostrictive material we get expansion. We always get expansion. Okay, so we always get expansion and uh, an electrostrictive material. So what does it look like? What is the you know graph? So let's say this is electric field, and this is a strain. Actually, it ends up being an electrostriction is sort of parabolic. While P is electricity, it's a linear relationship. At least initially. And this slope is the d constant, and this slope will be characterized by another uh, constant m of uh, p is of uh, electrostriction. But this is a linear collinear relationship. A again, we saw this relationship just reminding you of it. This is the linear slope here. So this was the explanation of uh, of p is electrostriction. We started with just talking about how you know the polarization, why it causes. Um, why why we need polarization or dis, or a uh, non-central symmetric structure which is a polar material and how that again using a spring model we can kind of understand a strong spring weak spring model for Peel's electricity which allows us to have both a strain positive and also a negative strain from an electric field but in the case of electrostriction we could only get positive strain from electrostriction. So this is the difference. Uh, the electrostriction is not used as much and this is why we're not having a course on electrostriction versus we're having a course on Peel's electricity because this is not uh, utilized as much uh, in practice uh, for several uh, different reasons you can read up on. Thank you for watching.